There's actually three reasons why living with your boyfriend is a sin. Stick around to hear them. Welcome back to God Nod. My name is Casey. I make Catholic content for Catholics to grow in relationship with Jesus and Mary. And today we're going to be talking about kind of a harder topic. Something that uh, is becoming more and more popular. Living with your boyfriend. Now, I am making this video because I have noticed with the woman that I disciple and accompany and friends, just friends I have, um, that because this is like such a growing trend, I don't even know if it's considered a trend, but because it's, it's just almost like everyone's living with their boyfriend because everyone is doing it, or almost everyone, it seems that it just seems like no big deal. And I just want to call you higher. I just want to call you higher because we're called to live for heaven. And sometimes that requires sacrifice. And these, this is one of the topics that is hard, hard to have, and it can be hard to make. It's a hard sacrifice to make sometimes, especially if all of your friends are living with their boyfriends, um, or staying the night and all of this, and it, and it can be very hard. So anyway, I, knowledge is power. And you know, the more we know, the more we know our Lord, the more we can love our Lord and the more we can grow in our faith. And, um, yeah, so I just want to, to make this video because a lot of people don't know why it's a sin. And so I want to explain why, because if we don't know why, what we're doing for what we're doing, then it makes it really hard not to do it. So I hope you guys find this helpful. Okay. So the first reason, <laughs> the first reason why living with your boyfriend or even spending the night with your boyfriend is a sin is, is because it's an occasion of sin. And we might think like, oh, well, I'm not sinning. But honestly, like if you're putting yourself in a situation of temptation, in a situation where you are tempted to sin, that itself is a sin because that's the first step to not sinning is not putting yourself in riskful and temp temptful situations. In fact, there's so much scripture that talks about just like fleeing from fleeing from temptation. Uh, one that I want to uh, point out is Proverbs 4, 15. Proverbs 4, 15 says, Avoid temptation, do not go on it, turn away from it and pass on. And then we have 2 Timothy 22. Eek. Uh, he says, Shun youthful passions and pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace, along with those who call on the Lord from a pure heart. And then from Second Cor or sorry, First Corinthians chapter six, verses eighteen, it says, "Shun fornication. Every sin that a person commits is outside the body, but the fornicator sins against the body itself. Fornication meaning sex outside of marriage." So, there you have it. If that's not more clear, <laughs> Scripture is very clear. That fornification, it's a sin. It's it's a grave sin. Um, and what that means is that you you are breaking your relationship with our Lord every time you commit a grave sin and you have full knowledge of it and you have full consent with it. That's what we call a mortal sin. And so to live with our boyfriend, first off, it puts us in an occasion of sin. Even if you start with living in separate rooms, it's not going to last long because you love each other. Um It'd be concerning if there wasn't a temptation almost uh, because, you know, you're supposed to be in love and, and, and you want to be united and in and, and one flesh. And so when you live together, it's super hard to be chaste and to be living chastely. And it's, it, the same goes for spending the night. Okay, so scripture tells us to flee from temptation and scripture also makes it clear that fornication is a sin. So that's the first reason. The second reason why living with your boyfriend is a sin is because scandal. It's scandalizing. And what I mean by that is that by, by your friends, by your family, by your cousins, by whoever that knows you, by the church community, if they see you and they see, oh, they go to church, they're a Christian, oh, they're living with their boyfriend, that must mean it's okay. By you even going to church or are you practicing or even praying, it, it, you carry some kind of authority of a, of a Christian authority of people looking to you and they look to you. And if they um, look, at, like, look at you as some kind of role model, you carry some kind of moral authority. You, you carry some kind of weight that people look up to you and people will follow you. And whatever you do, it makes it okay for others to do because they trust you. 
And so what this means is if you say, okay, I'm, yeah, I'm moving in with my boyfriend or I'm spending the night all the time or whatever it is, then you make it very clear to everyone that you don't see a problem with it. And so those that look up to you will then think, oh, well, she's a Christian. She doesn't see a problem with it. That must mean it's fine for me too. And here's the thing. This is... I know this is, is this is a hard topic, but sometimes, you know, and I'm trying to be kind of sensitive to people's situations and, and you know, there's all of these all of these reasons why you might want to move in with your boyfriend, but Jesus is super intense sometimes. <laughs> and one of the most I think, one of the most intense things that Jesus says, I think it's in Luke two, but in Matthew eighteen, read this, read this. The, the paragraph title is literally called Temptation to Sin. But he says in Matthew 18, chapter 6, he says, If any of you put a stumbling block before one of these little ones who believe in me, it would be better for you if a great millstone were fastened around your neck and you were drowned in the depth of the sea. Woe to the world because of stumbling blocks. Okay. That was an intense moment for Jesus. Jesus is not messing around here with scandal or temptation or causing people to sin. He says, if you are being a stumbling block to these little ones, which means little ones, that doesn't mean five-year-olds. That means anyone that looks up to you. That means anyone that sees you as a role model, that sees you as someone with moral authority. Jesus is saying this to us. It'd be better for a millstone to be wrapped around our neck and thrown into the ocean. That's okay. That's like so dramatic, first of all. But then also like, if Jesus is this dramatic in his language and this intense, then this must mean he's super serious about scandal and about causing others to sin. Because that means at the end of our life, when we become, when we come face to face with our Lord, we are not only gonna be going through purgatory and be purified from our sins, but we are gonna be punished. We're gonna be going through the purging of the sins that we have helped, we have caused others to uh, commit. That's the truth. And so we don't want, we don't want to help people sin. We want to help people grow closer to our Lord. And so this is one of the biggest reasons why moving in with your boyfriend is a sin is because of scandal. And it's because we cause other people to sin because the fact of the matter is, is chastity is so important and reverencing each other's bodies in order to be able to give the whole gift of yourself on your wedding night, it's so important. Because during the during sexual intercourse with your spouse, you are saying to that person, I give my entire self to you, my body, my soul, my heart, my my whole life, my future, the my future motherhood, what everything, I'm giving it to you. But before marriage, you're if you if you fornicate, you are saying that with your body, but you're not meaning that with your soul. You're actually lying with your body. As this is like a theology that Saint Paul Saint Paul John the Second, um, sorry Saint John Paul II, uh, talked about is that you are lying with your body because your body is saying one thing, but it's not matching reality. Because your body, your when you embrace in the in the sexual embrace. When you, when you go into that um, moment with your spouse, you are giving your whole self and only in marriage when you vow your entire life to that person are you able to actually mean that. And so that's that's what that is. And so it's so important. It's a, Sex is a gift from God and it should be reverenced as such. And, and chastity is hard and like we need to do our best to make it a priority in our, in our relationships um, and even to help our friendships. So... That is the second reason why living with your boyfriend or spending the night all the time is a sin is because of scandal. And then the third reason why it's a sin is because marriage, you know, marriage was designed from God from the very beginning with Adam and Eve. You know, there is a natural process to marriage. And then when Jesus came and he he blessed the couple at the wedding at Cana and um, he made marriage a sacrament. Like marriage is a sacrament to, to when when you are married with your spouse, every act of charity, you are receiving divine grace. You are receiving sanctifying grace, which is amazing. And so marriage is so sacred. 
and, and living together is so vital and so it's so hand in hand with marriage that whenever you live together before you're married you're you're stripping the sacredness of living together away from the marriage and so I just want to I just wanted to go through these reasons because you know okay actually one more thought you know if you whatever you like about living together whether it's you know saving money whether it's you know um, just being able to wake up and, and, and enjoy coffee with your boyfriend, whatever it is, um, I just want you to think about how much more amazing that, that is when you're actually married. And there's a reason why it's so fun and so special. It's because it's reserved for, reserved for something so special. Uh, and so with that, with that, you know, those are the three reasons why living together before marriage is a sin and something that we just like don't talk about enough um, and I think you have a right to know it because I, I desire to be so close to the Lord and I desire you to be close to the Lord and we have to know what the Lord is calling us to do and the Lord never calls us to sin. In fact, if we read Matthew six eighteen, we will see how he is very displeased with us leading others to sin. And so if you, um, if you learned anything from this video, please comment below. Um, or if you know anyone that is um, trying to make a decision whether to live with their boyfriend right now, please send this video to them. Uh, because sometimes it's very hard to have this conversation with people um, because we just don't know how to articulate why it's a sin or why it's not for our own good. Um, if you want the reasons, non-religious reasons to not live with your boyfriend, I also have a video for that that you can check up up here at this link above. Uh, but this is it's a, this is a very hard a very hard topic because it seems like everyone is starting to live with their boyfriend before marriage and it's just it's not good for society it's not good for our souls it's not good for our relationships there's just actually no pros to it um, at all even studies show that if you see that in my video for the non-religious reasons studies show that there is no positive correlation at all no positive contribution to living together before marriage in fact it only makes relationships worse. So anyway, I hope this video has blessed you. I know it's hard. Thank you for bearing through with me. Please know of my prayers and God bless.